All right, so let's jump back to it. We'll cover harvestables tonight. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to go find my items item names enumerator that holds all the item names that I'm gonna be able to use, and I'm gonna add two. So one, two. So this is gonna be my wood, and this one will be the stone. Now once that's done, I'm gonna save that real quick. Once that's done, let's open up our item info data table, and we'll add two to here also. This first one will be wood, and the second one will be stone. If you have an item selected like this, you can hit F2 on the keyboard, and it automatically lets you rename. And don't forget that these have to be spelled exactly the same as in the enumerator, so that they can register each other well. All right, we will set the rest of this up in just a minute. I'm going to save all that for now because I need to go find my base interactable. I am going to right click and create a child blueprint of it. Let's scroll down so we can see it and I'm going to call that base harvestable underscore BP. I'm going to create a new folder to hold our harvestables. I'm going to call it oop, harvesting. Now, base harvestable into harvesting move here. Now, I'll open that up. I'm going to open up this base harvestable real quick because first things first. We need to select the base harvestable BP self and I'm going to untick interactable. That'll keep it from uh, popping up with that tooltip widget thing when we walk up to it. So, I'm going to compile that real quick. Item name for this. Oh, well, well this is the base one. Never mind. <laughs> Alright, so once that's done, let's go into the event graph. We will get rid of all of this. And what we want to do is we want to do an on event any damage. Event any damage. Now our harvestables are going to have a health counter. So I'm going to add that as a variable right here that will be an integer. Now if you want... Um, like, let's add a begin play node. Like, if you want these to have varying amounts of health instead of always being, like, the same amount, what you can do is on begin play, you can set the health to, like, a random integer in range, and then just set it to, like, let's say you want it to be between 2 and 5 hits. We'll do 2 and 4. So, when it begins play, it'll automatically adjust, it'll pick a random number in that range, and then you don't know how many times you'll have to hit it, if you want to do that. But, I'm not going to do that, but that's just to show you how, if you wanted it. For mine, it's just going to be defaulted to 3, so 3 hits every time. So, health, 3. Then I will get that, and on any damage, I want to decrement. So the decrement just means it'll step it down by one. So it subtracts one from the specified value and then automatically sets it. So we don't have to do a minus and then a set. It just automatically does it all for us. So from our result, we want to see if this is less than or equal to zero. We're going to branch. So if it's not less than or equal to zero, that means it's greater than zero, still has health. Then we just want to cast to the player. We will get the player character, and then we will pick up item, and we want to get item info and feed that directly in. Okay, oh, um, what you can do, if we do it this way, you'll pick up one piece of wood every single time you chop a tree, one rock every time you chop a rock. So what we'll do is we will just take all this move it this way and we're going to do a for loop not the for each loop but a for loop so we'll plug this in loop body goes to the pickup item first index is always zero because indexes start at zero last index what we can do is we can get a random integer in range just like we did earlier and let's say i want between two and well, two and four works. Let's do between two and four pieces of wood every time I hit it. So we're subtracting the health, then we're casting to the player and picking up a random amount of items. 
This is probably not the best way of doing this, but we'll update this later on. But it it works. I mean, it works really good. Item info of type item info structure doesn't match the problem. What? How you know match? I swear it does this every time. I did it. It worked perfectly in the... Uh, in the trial version, and then I come over here, and may maybe I did something different. Let me check real quick. I literally just did this like like five minutes ago. Why you mess with me, game? All right, delete, compile. Now this doesn't work. Okay, compile now. Maybe I need to open the character real quick. Mm, I bet this is from when I tried to set up the tooltip video. If you get errors like that, sometimes you just have to open widgets and recompile them for some reason you would think that on like on begin play it would just automatically do it but if you get any errors like that so the reason I got those is because I uh, I was recording a tutorial a couple days ago but I was just so drained from work and I was just so exhausted that it became like a 25 minute video that was not very good and I just I deleted it I deleted everything I did but it's still you know reacting to some of it I suppose I'm going to save everything real quick. But it's a good chance to show you. If you get errors like that to where it says blueprint failed to compile, sometimes all you got to do is just open up hit that compile button. So now with all that done, now we should be able to go back. Let's do our pickup item function. And now we will get the item info. Plug that bad boy in. And that works fine. It's just the engine is super finicky sometimes. So, if the health is greater than zero, we want to do this, but if it's less than, we want to do all of this with one more step. So, I'm going to copy all of that, paste it up here, connect it to the true, and then on completed, I just want to destroy actor. So, it's run out of health. We want it to go bye-bye. I'll save real quick and now what we can do is we can just create child blueprint classes of this so this will be wood underscore BP create one more child called stone underscore BP and now when I open this up don't forget that you will need to set the item name automatically since these are children of the base interactable automatically they're inheriting its parent construction script so it's just automatically assigning everything but we do still need to you know, select the right name. So for this one is wood compile. And I'm gonna go ahead and update the static mesh. For the static mesh, I'm just gonna use a tree on this one. The fall fall tree. I think that's the one I used last time. That's a good looking tree. That's a good looking tree. Alright. Now back out here. Open up the stone blueprint. Update the static mesh. I'm just gonna use a rock. Nice little, nice little river rock. I'm gonna do the same thing and set its item name to stone. Now we can compile all that and save it just like that. Now we can go into our item info data table and finish fleshing out all this information. So for the wood, the item class is wood. The item name is wood. One of my favorite songs by Alice in Chains is wood. <laughs> it's spelled a little different. The item image. Alright, we're going to go wood. <laughs> and I'm going to use this, this one right here. This is part of the craft resources icons and it's one of the free packs so you should be able to use these if you need them. Current stack we'll say one. Max stack 99 for mine. Depending on your needs you can change it you know. Item type it's a resource. 
price, uh, 30 sell value 10. Why not? Item description we haven't added in yours yet. I That was part of something I added in the tooltip thing that I recorded and I forgot to delete. So if you don't have this, don't worry. We will add that together when we get on to the tooltip vidya. So all right, back on the stone. Item class is stone. Item name, stone. Uh, image is rock, no. Let me guess, stone? Yes, stone, because you're right here. Also part of the craft resources. Current stack, one, max stack, 99. Item type, resource. And we'll just do the same cell value, let's think 30 and 10. All right, so with all this done, once your blueprint or your item info data table is all fleshed out, let's save all this right now. And what we can do, I can get rid of you, 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 and you. Grab out a tree, grab out a stone, and let's jump on in this bad boy. And then I need a sword. Double click and equip. And now I can run up. Let's see, no matter how close I get, I still don't have that. Like in the preview video, it had a, a little pop up, but it doesn't here. So let's. All right, and now I've got ten pieces of wood. Hooray! Uh oh. So sometimes it'll need to be repositioned. So for the stone, what we can do here is I'm just going to make the sphere radius a little bit bigger and move it up. This should let us overlap with it. So just to check, let's jump back in, grab my sword. Oh, you're going to make me a lie. All right. Maybe we need to alter its collision settings. So for the collision right here, that's right. Overlap all dynamic. We'll make it custom and we will make it block visibility because that is the channel that our attack trace is coming off of. So now it should work. Let's take a look. Let's jump back over, slap a boulder. Yeah, there we go. And how much stone did I get? 13 stone. All right. And how much wood? 12 wood. That'll come in handy for a crafting system that we, you know, already have. So yeah, we could do something more with that. You know what? You know what? I'm thinking right now. Thinking right, you know, would be cool. It'd be super cool. I've been playing. Uh, when I do have a little bit of free time, I'm too tired to record, but uh, I, I, I've been kind of vegging out with the game a little bit when I have a few minutes to play. Uh, Stardew Valley, super fun. I love that game. Let's do some of its farming mechanics, too. Let's add that to this. That would be cool. And, and it's not too difficult to make stuff just, you know, grow. So, yep. Yeah, I mean, if that sounds good with y'all to add on, let me know. Uh, but I, I would be, I'd be down for it. <laughs> But that is it for this video, so you can just repeat this process for as many different types of trees, different types of lumber, different types of rocks, different types of, like if you have iron ore veins or copper ore veins or anything like that, you can do the exact same thing. If you don't want to hit it with a sword, what you can do is do an event interact, just like we did over here, and when you interact with it, uh, you can add animations to make your character like the reason I'm not doing that way is because we don't the uh, Mixamo doesn't have any good harvesting animations I looked and uh, they don't they don't have any good ones but this works pretty well but if you have the animations and you want to do that then you can just set your character into the animation mode and then once the animation is finished playing then you go through all this um, that blueprint that we set up in the base and then you do all that there. But that is it for this video, my friends. And in the next one, we will start covering the tooltip, which comes in handy. It just adds a nice little quality of life improvement, so you can check the item info as you're 
looking at it in game. I'll show you how to attach it to the viewport and set it to your mouse and then customize where it is on the screen in relation to your mouse. If you don't want it to the right, you can have it to the left. If you want it to the down or to the north. So, alright, but that is it for this one. I will see y'all in a bit. Bye-bye.